Good afternoon. I can see like it's almost like 4.10. It's not easy to hear something at this point of time. Let me try again. Good afternoon. Very good. OK. First of all, let me thank organizers of uh, Asian Agriculture Summit 2017, and also my former boss, Dr. William Durr. Because of him, I'm standing here and uh, making this presentation. And it's in indeed an honor and opportunity to be part of this important summit, because I understand this is the beginning of the Asian chapter. I have been asked to make a presentation on ICTs in support of agripreneurship. So you can see a lot of ICT tools, and my friend presented about an app application, also explained about the crops. For me, if I need to define ICTs in my own perception, it's not only a computer, internet, mobile phone, but it may be anything, even an app. Uh, nowadays, we are talking about the drones and even Internet of Things or a video technology. What we need to understand, what technology works in a best given kind of situation. Sometimes it's a single technology, sometimes it's a combination of technologies. Before going into the details of uh, how these ICTs support the agripreneurship, and also how do we need to do some kind of uh, application development to accelerate the ICT innovations, to strengthen the agripreneurs. And uh, I'm going to show some of the strategic guidelines. That's what I have been asked to do in my presentation. But for that one, why do we need to think of ICTs and agripreneurship? If you would see these hunger labs, the map that actually shows almost like one in nine of the world population go to hungry to the bats. So even in the 2050, you could expect like we have 9.5 billion people, we need more food. But it's not only the food security, and also the accessibility and affordability also the big challenge. Though we can have the food stops, if we can't access that one, if we can't afford to buy that one, then still we need to go to the bed with hungry stomachs. So this is where we see a lot of potential for the agripreneurship, how best we can reach out to our target audience and bring the products in a more cost-effective way. So this is where like, we can see why we are talking about the ICTs during the Green Revolution. We were not having that one, still we achieved the Green Revolution. But nowadays, the next generation, mostly they are dealing with the ICT tools. My son, he learned how to operate a computer when he was two years old, before he learned the alphabets. It's a functional literacy. He likes to watch the Dora and Diego videos. And he knows, press the N, and the list pops up, select the Nick Jr., and watch his videos. So that's how, and he knows more about the technology than me. Recently, we celebrated his birthday. He asked the birthday gift, I need an iPhone. We were about to buy the iPhone 8. Then he said, no, no, wait a minute. iPhone 10 is coming. I need that one. I better wait for that one. So he's more updated than me. So most of these applications we need to see because the next generation purely focus on some of these tools. For example, if you see the Facebook, I was trying to understand how the Philippines doing in the social media and ICTs. Surprisingly, if you open the Google and type the keywords ICT and social media, the Filipinos spend most of the time on social media. It's number one, leaving all the founders of uh, the United States, Facebook, Google, and all these people. You see the surprising results. 1.86 million billion monthly active users on the Facebook and the daily 1.23 billion. You could imagine if the Filipinos are spending more time, how much they are occupying in that particular lot. Another interesting thing, in a minute, 300, 300 hours videos are being uploaded into the YouTube. It's a crowd sourcing, and nowadays we are talking about the crowdfunding also. So that's the power of provide the empty boxes, allow crowd to contribute that one. And other platforms, you know, the LinkedIn or Wikipedia, but if you see the Wikipedia, you type a high yielding variety, you ended up not getting many results. But if you type Boeing 777, you ended up getting several results. It's the technology 
and the subject matter experts, they do not match sometimes. So what we need to understand how best we can take advantage of this agriculture and rural development ICT technologies. It's a snapshot. You could see the mobile phones are more than the population of the Philippines. It's almost like 126%. When I was doing this one, like two phones, probably some of you have the three phones also. And other than that, when the social media users grow 25%, it's 21% more than the global average. And other than that, when the time spent 8.59 hours on the internet, it's 5.23 hours, and the mobile device 3.36 hours. This is where we see how best we can combine ICTs and agripreneurship to boon the entrepreneuring the young people. And this is where you could see where the value chain comes into the picture. And this is the value chain segments and the stakeholders. And uh, you could see various segments. And when I was going to the school, we always talk about the seed to seed. But now we are talking about the farm to fork. And even if we eat the food with the hands, we can say like land to hand. Whatever the terminology we can use, but we can see the segments and the stakeholders in this one. The early generation ICT for the model, some of you are aware, like telecenters, are text and SMS based, and now the interactive voice recording systems. These mostly fail to establish the last mile connectivity, are focusing on a specific area. But if you see the next generation ICT for agripreneurship models, it's all like app development covering the whole value chain, starting from the soil preparations to even bring the food to the marketing level also. Under the leadership of the Dr. William there, we developed a green phablet powered by the green sim, and which is creating the ecosystem of the technology partners and the knowledge partners and also the tech groups also, and the business entities. We are bringing and creating that ecosystem to create that kind of opportunity. We have fortunately received an award showcasing innovative use of technology of the decade. And these are the some models and this is a framework I better explain during the discussion time. And this is the analysis what I could take it up based on the several models and the applications both in Asia and Africa. Since lack of time, probably we could have a discussion. Otherwise, during the discussion time, I could explain more if you need to look at that one. And mostly, we need to work on the business plans. And the earlier application provides the same thing and how we can develop a business plan, what's the influencing factors, and what's the functional factors. And in this one, you can see the lean canvas model to better understand. Most importantly, I always look for a problem and challenges, that's the first step, and understand my target community to better bring a new innovation or a solution. And these are the strategic guidelines we need to understand. Mostly, understand the big picture, what are the challenges, opportunities, priorities, and policies, interests of the government? And other than that one, what kind of ICT applications we could look at in the entire value chain? But most importantly, three categories nowadays most of the applications are focusing on. Supply chain management and information management, communication awareness and marketing, it's mostly we call extension. And we need to understand before we go for any startups, we need to understand what's our strengths, weakness, opportunities, and the threats. And most importantly, we could see lack of partnerships between the government and institutions, as well as the financial institutions. So this is where I see the incubations and innovators, innovation labs play a big role to provide an enabling environment, a tree, create a kind of platform, all these young, young people to come there and enhance their skill set and also get an exposure to transform their novel ideas into a business ventures. That's the potential of ICTs. But most important part, rather than computerizing the inefficiencies in the system, we need to bring the reforms before we computerize the inefficiencies in the system. That's most important. And other than that, social acceptance of the technology is important. So what is the need of the hour? As I mentioned, we need more knowledge labs, knowledge parks, and also the knowledge networks to help the next generation to make them to use these wonderful tools and make the agriculture more sustainable and more sexy and see like how best we can make more money and also see it's not a way of culture how we could develop that one as an industry to make it agriculture more profitable. Thank you.